Praise be Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Hyacinth. He was born in the year 1185 in Poland, and after completing his studies and being ordained to the priesthood, he made a journey to Rome with the Bishop of Krakow, who also happened to be his uncle. And it was there at Rome that he met St. Dominic, who was in the process of founding the Order of Preachers. And so he was interested in joining the Dominicans, and he was accepted by St. Dominic himself. And after completing a year of his novitiate, he was sent back to Poland. St. Hyacinth would go on to be a great missionary preacher and also a miracle worker in Poland, Lithuania, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and also Russia, bringing about numerous conversions. In fact, he himself had baptized over 120,000 people. He was always opening up new churches and convents wherever he went. And for this reason, he's also called the Apostle of the North. Now, St. Hyacinth attributed all of his apostolic success to the intercession of our Blessed Mother, to whom he had great devotion, following, of course, St. Dominic's own example. And one time, when he was at Kiev, the Tartars sacked the town, but St. Hyacinth was busy uh, celebrating Mass, and he wasn't aware of it until after he finished celebrating Mass. And so without waiting to unvest, he took the ciborium with the Blessed Sacrament in his hands, and as he was leaving the church, he passed by a statue of our Blessed Lady, and from the statue he heard a voice, Hyacinth, my son, why dost thou leave me behind? Take me with thee, and leave me not to mine enemies. Now, the statue was made of heavy alabaster, but when Hyacinth took it in his arms, it became light as a feather. And so he walked off, bringing our Lord and Our Lady to safety. And now Our Lady granted him one final grace by calling him to herself on her feast, the Feast of the Assumption, in the year 1257. And so we see in St. Hyacinth a great example of Marian devotion and also the fact that he attributed all of his apostolic success to the intercession of Our Lady. In fact, just as Our Lady sustained, uh, or she made his work successful uh, because she has always interceded for the church and her apostolic labors. We see Our Lady right from the very beginning sustaining and making fruitful the early church through her intercession. We remember that St. Peter converted 3,000 that first day with his preaching. And so throughout the centuries, the history of the church, Our Lady has interceded. And in fact, we can, all of us, can attribute all of the apostolic success throughout the centuries of the church to Our Lady's intercession, to her fulfilling her role as mother of the church, that is, giving birth to souls, giving birth to supernatural life in souls. She is mother in the order of grace. And just as she gave birth to the head of the mystical body, so she also gives birth to all of the members of the mystical body. And so, on the contrary side of things, we can attribute all failure, all apostolic failure, to what? To our own infidelity, 
to the infidelity of the members of the mystical body. The slow pace in converting souls, the so-called vocational crisis, the closing down of churches, etc. We don't need to look anywhere else than at our own selves, at the members of the mystical body and their infidelity, their lack of faithfulness in fulfilling their daily duties, especially the religious duties, specifically as members of the body of Christ. So let us consecrate ourselves to Our Lady without limits so as to become her instruments for conversion and sanctification. Let's often invoke her aid as St. Hyacinth did, especially by means of the recitation of the Holy Rosary. St. Hyacinth, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.